All right, guys, this one is about null safety in Java. The reason I want to make a video about this is because a lot of people think that null safety or lack thereof is a huge negative, a huge drawback that Java has. And, um, but it's the reality is Java has done a lot, or Java developers in general, they've done a lot to address this issue. So it's no longer a significant issue that Java has. Um, like I know, I know one of the uh, I, I guess arguments for Kotlin is that it's also null safe, and then uh, Java is not. Um, but um, there, there, there's ways around this. So there's like two main ways around, it, right? Um, so I'm gonna try to talk about both today, but um, we're gonna cover one of them because the other one is kind of obsolete, kind of um, not obsolete, but it just puts too much constraint on uh, what you need to do because it only runs on uh, SDK level uh, eight, and um, so yeah, um, let's just focus on the very first one. It's basically the optional API. Um, what is that? So since Java syntax doesn't necessarily change like Kotlin has to support uh, optionals, meaning null safety, um, they come up with workarounds. One of them is the optional API. So you can do this now. Well, let me zoom in some more. There's these optional objects called, well, they're called optional. And optional of um, test string. Okay. So now I created an, it's basically at the most basic level, it's basically a wrap around the string object of test string in this case, right? But the thing is, it, they have the option to be set to empty. So as long as you're providing someone with an optional of any kind, they're, they won't have direct access to the object itself. So when you have an API that accepts a string method, uh, and whoever receives it assumes that it's not null and doesn't do a null check around it, it's going to cause a null pointer exception. So optionals actually make your API strong because it forces the user to either null check, and here using optional null checks that are done this way, is present. Um, so you can do is present, and then to access the value, you can do dot get. Right, so let's just print it out. Okay, so now it's it's null set because I don't have direct access to the object itself. I have to do a, is present around it. Um, so when I run this, oh well, never mind. That was, I was making apps and then obviously this if statement was not working. So as you can see, it's it's working. Um, so let's create a package like we always do here because I want it to be a use case for a particular API that you want to create. In that case, it's going to make a lot more sense. I'm going to create a class called null safe API. It's basically a mock class. Oh, it's not going to do anything. It's just going to be null safe using optionals. And call it. This is going to have a listener. So this is my API, right? So I have a listener. The listener will accept value optional that will be generated by my API. And then the API itself will provide a 
solar generate value. And then it's going to have a listener. I guess I'm just going to put this solicit in the constructor. And then when I call generate value, I'm going to call listener accept optional of new ID and new ID string. Okay. Right, it's very simple. Uh, it took a while, but it's very simple. And then um, let's go back to our main. Um, actually, let me zoom in on that in case you guys didn't see what exactly what we did. So it's basically we have this API, very basic class for the listener. And then when, it, when we tell it to generate a value, it will call an accept method on the listener itself. And then what's going to happen is it's going to pass in a optional that contains a random UUID in the form of a string that is. And then this is how it's going to look here. So I'm going to initialize my Um, okay, so I'm gonna call we'll say API generate value a couple times. Okay, so you see this is exactly why it's a strong API. So there is the chance of me as a consumer of this API, you know, I'm just someone that's using the subscribe into the API via a listener, again provided by them. And then I actually don't have access to a direct value that can potentially be null, but they don't need to send a value that exists. They can just sell absent, um, absent um, optional. So in that case, to access the value, I need to, I can do get in this, well, obviously this is bad behavior. Um, I, um, I, since I know it's optional, I know for a fact I need to either null check or I uh, was using this, I need to do if it's present and then, well, I need to do if block. There's another way I'll show you in a second. If it's present, um, I can just, you know, print it at that point. Okay. This is one way of doing it. The other way, again, I think it's much cleaner. Um, I don't need to do another if value, I mean if block, optional, if if present. Then you just supply with a consumer. Okay. And you just put a lambda instead. So now I have a consumer. S. So what happens is if you do if present in a provider consumer, um, it'll do the if check for you. And if it does indeed not null, it's going to call it. If it's not null, it's not going to call it. So the whole thing is null safe. Um, I mean, there, there's nothing much to it. This is a, a pretty basic API that Java created for us to uh, avoid nulls, um, no null values or null, provide null safety, basically. Um, there's another bigger, um, but again, kind of slightly not as well supported tool you can use. It's called a checker framework. So I'll, I'll provide a link to checker framework. It may be not too obsolete for your project. It runs on an API level eight. Um, yeah, so language level eight. So that, that's the only problem it has. And um, it's an annotation processor based framework. So it supports, I can always show you examples, but I don't have it on my, I don't, I don't have it installed because I'm running uh, API level 10, and then, um, so, static, string, valid, um, it's, you just mark it, non null, well, see, I don't have that, so, yeah, so I don't have that checker framework enabled, so basically it's an application processor based, so you can annotate your uh, variables with non-null. So if I did this 
here, since I annotate with non null, this would uh, raise an issue, but not at runtime. Um, it's, since it's annotation process based, it runs annotation processors to detect uh, any potential uh, NP, no pointer exceptions. So this would raise an issue before the code compiles, which is again a huge benefit to you because your code, I mean, you, you'll be catching nulls before compilation. It's, that's huge. So definitely better than having a no pointer exception in runtime. So in compile time, this will run it, this will run, and then uh, catch the issues such as this. And it's actually pretty smart because it basically uh, goes through your entire code hierarchy to see where things can be null. But the only thing is, you have to use a JDK they provide, which is JDK level 8. And um, it has all fields annotated with their annotations. Um, so it's safe to use, but the only, that's the main constraint. The other one is that if you are using any third-party libraries and they're not annotated using check framework annotations, uh, it's not going to be null safe. So your whole project will stop being null safe as long as you're using stuff that is also null, not null safe. So yeah, this I, I like this one a lot better. It's a lot simpler. Um, there's actually an improved optional API provided by Google Guava. I know I, I work at Google, so I'm a huge Guava fan. So um, I'm going to put a link to Guava again in this video also in case you want to see that. But um, yeah, um, go check it out. Thanks.